when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know, I am Sir Angie. This is still 4F Beauty. Hopefully you're watching me in black and white right now. Just like the start of Wizard of Oz, but there's no dropping houses on witches to steal their shoes. Okay? And this, as you will have seen from the title, the thumbnail, and if you read any of it, the description, is the latest in my pick collab series. This time I am delighted to welcome back to the channel the ever so wonderful and youthful and talented if he wasn't so nice I could really dislike him but he's too nice to dislike Christopher J M U A so if you want to find out just exactly which picture Christopher has selected from the few that I sent over for him to choose from which palette or palettes I have used to produce this look and more importantly what this looks like in glorious Technicolor oh my friend it would seem you have the best seat in the house Sammy the Sloth is here to remind you that it is time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy and enjoy. Because here comes the film. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I know what you're thinking. Has she already started to put makeup on because if she has that black was terrible? <laughs> no. No, what this is. Now, long term viewers will know I love me my Chrome Pebble Primer. And I use the shade Cotton, which is pure white, because it really lets colours pow. But because today I want a smokier, deeper look. I am trying another one of their eye primers in Slate, which is pure black. Now what I did, I applied it as I usually do when I apply the, the white primer. Applied it first with a, like a concealer brush or a packing brush. And then blended it out so there's no clumpy bits with a small dense blending brush and then just with this one again just pat it over the lid just to make that a little more opaque because obviously I want the most emphasis there um, it's the first time I've used the black eye primer I'm hoping it works as well as the white one does I don't see any reason why it shouldn't but, you'll know, if I use something new, I try it out on screen with you. So you get my honest first opinion, and you can see exactly the same as I can, whether it works or not. So, I will have told you in the intro, <laughs> that this is the, I think, 58th edition of my pick series. To be honest, I didn't. I wasn't even sure I'd get to ten, let alone fifty-eight. Um, but it is one of my favourite collabs to do. It's one that I started a couple of years ago now. To be honest, because it always amazed me that you know I, I used to watch a lot of different larger influencers that used to get. PR. I tend to watch smaller ones now, more like myself, and sort of up to about five, ten thousand. Um, um. Followers, subscribers, brain gone. Um, but you know, I, I used to watch your Tati and your Manny and your Laura and your Jeffrey and all of that lot. 
and they'd all get the same palette around about the same sort of time and they'd all end up doing very similar looks with it and I thought well that mm, that can't be right because I look at the palette and I just see completely that's hubby coming in if you can hear him in the background I need my drill okay you better come and say hello now you've oh, say hello. now you've interrupted you better come and show your face yeah, hello. Not hello hubby for those of you who've not met him before for those who have yes that is a, a hands free light on his head He's going for a, a boys' night in his man cave, mm. and rather than put the outside light on, oh. he finds it far more fun to look like he's about to go and do a shift down the mine. Yeah, yeah. it's a bit easier. Have fun. I will. Stop my shelf from pulling away. Okay. Yeah. Is it in danger of running away, or is it just going to uh, fall off the side? My Everything might fall off it. I just need to kind of screw on the, the thing a bit better. Okay. okay. All right then. Right, as I was saying, you know, I'd, I'd look at the palette <laughs> that the different influencers were using, and I'd see so many different colours that I would have used and that I would have put together. And when I was first sort of getting into makeup, I thought, well, does that mean my choices are wrong? And I'd, if I'd got the palette or I'd got a similar colour theme, I'd do what I thought. And I thought, well, actually, I quite like what I've done. So I thought, how would it be? Not so much the same palette, because not everyone can afford... I mean, I very often can't afford the high-end palettes. I have to save up for them or their gifts or whatever. Um... But I thought if if some if I had two different people, myself and someone else, using the same picture as inspirations, so we've got the same colours to pick from, how different or how similar would our looks be? And that was how Pick got started, the photo inspiration collaboration challenge. Um basically the only two rules are, so I've got an itch on my leg, the only two rules are you can only use the colours that you see in the picture, so you can't add any others in, but you don't have to use all of the colours. So, this time I'm collaborating again with my wonderful friend from across the pond, Christopher J M U A, and he has chosen this gorgeous picture here. I've called it the fairy woods because that, that's what it makes me think of. It's a really arty shot of some woods, obviously either at dusk or twilight. Um, the majority of the picture obviously is shades of, of pink and purple, but then you have the, just that rainbow of light coming through. So it gives you so many options and then just off to the right of the rainbow you've got that shot of deep red and deep blue and it's just... I'm really glad he chose this one because it, it gives me a chance to do something a little bit smoky and a little bit different. So, that's it. That, that's what we're doing. Um, I've decided I'm going to pull out because I haven't used this yet my Beauty Bay Age of Opulence palette because it's got a nice lot of purples in here um, I might choose one of my indie brand singles to do the main colour on my mobile lid um, or I might choose something from in here I haven't quite decided yet um, regular viewers will know I very often make up my mind and change it whilst the film is going on um, this does still remain a teaching channel though, so I'll chat a bit more about Christopher at the end of the film. Um, I, I started my channel because so many friends were saying they wanted me to show them how to do their makeup because they liked how I did mine. And with my increased immobility because of my pain, 
I couldn't get out to them like I wanted to and a couple of them had said when I had managed to get to them oh I wish I'd recorded it so I could play it back for Friday night when I'm going out and I could recreate it so I started this channel and I, to be honest I was only expecting like a handful of people to watch it so I'm absolutely astounded that so many of you have clicked follow and I love every single one of you to pieces um, but this does still remain a teaching channel at its core so when I'm applying the eyeshadow I come in very very close it's just my eyes on screen it does mean when I'm looking down to add more pigment to a palette or to a palette to a brush from a palette or if I'm cleaning a brush for example you get a lovely shot of my widow's peak but I figure that's a small price to pay for actually being able to see what's happening especially if you are like me and you watch it on your phone screen and your eyesight's not what it was when you were 21. I also get a lot of people, I mean I've got deep set eyes and for a long time I thought I had hooded lids until one morning during a pain somnia moment instead of shopping because I was skint I started researching different eye shapes and tips and tricks that I could pass on and it was then that I found out that actually I have deep set eyes not hooded eyes so I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment where I talk you through the difference because I see so many people with deep set eyes think they have hooded lids even big influencers say they've got hooded lids and I look at it and think mm, no, you've got deep set eyes love so I'm going to talk you through again really up close just my eyes on screen so it's really easy to understand and see what I'm saying I will talk you through the differences between the two eye types and the best way to apply your eyeshadow to get the best initial look and the most longevity out of the look because although they do wear very similarly through the day the application process needs to be just that slightly bit different right here's that clip I will see you at the other end of it where I get to apply coloured pigments to my eyelids. See you at the other end. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter even with glitter glue I get a bare patch in the middle because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't so they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right so I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. 
with my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right. Uh, I'm using one of my Spectrum brushes, helpfully. It doesn't give me what number it is, but it's a big and fluffy brush. And I am going to start off with, I think, Velvet from this palette, which is a really lovely deep purple. Tapping back off, so I pick the pigment up. Now, I always hold the brush right at the end, so I put as little pressure on the lid as possible. If the um, handle of the brush is long enough, just push it into the hand there. It just helps stabilise this end of it for you. What we're going to do, instead of the windscreen wiper, which is what you'll see all these young influencers use, I'm going to be doing the Viennese Waltz Blend, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. Now the reason I do this, I'm 47 and I've lost over 200 pounds, so the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know slim teenagers with the same problem. If you rely on just the windscreen wiper, that's when your eyelid folds over and you get those telltale stripes through your eyeshadow. By doing the Venus Waltz method you're gently manipulating the lid in one direction and then the other without tugging on it too much so it should eliminate any creasing that you're going to get. All right. So I'm going to start halfway between my natural crease and my brow. I always start at the outside edge because if you do put too much down it's much easier to blend it out when you haven't got your nose in the way. I'm just going to build this colour up on top of that black primer. It's going on nicely. It does make a difference when you have a deep primer underneath it. You instantly get obviously more depth of colour but you do have to bear in mind that if you've got a, a palette that isn't very pigmented you may struggle to get the colours to show up I and mean, you can actually see that that is purple when you compare it to the other eye just 
going to continue just to build that colour up and just gently buff those edges out a little bit. I wanted to go super, super dark with it today. I like that. And now the same for this side. Now the reason that I don't do one eye at a time, which you will see a lot of makeup channels do, is because with my fibre I can get random puffiness anywhere including my face and there are times when um, sometimes one lid is a bit puffier than the other also hay fever season your lids can be puffy allergies etc and uh, Plus, of course, unless you're Jimmy Chuck and you Photoshop it and flip it over, your eyes are not symmetrical. So, when you relax your brows, you just need to make sure the shapes are the same. And you can see I need to bring this one up just a little bit more, this side. And the thing is, if you've done all of your blending with all your shades what can happen is you can sit back and go they don't match but I'm not sure at which point they're not matching so that's why I always do the eyes sort of consecutively rather than one at a time Now, I always, seems the ghost is back in my kitchen again. I always use a clean microfiber cloth to clean my brushes on. I used to use a colour switch, but I find that they are way too harsh on the bristles, especially, especially if you have natural head brushes. I mean this is synthetic thankfully but you're much better off just twirling your brush backwards and forwards until you get to the point that you're not getting any more pigment coming out to change shadows. that back in and I'm going to grab a slightly smaller blending brush Look, this one Need a quick wipe just make sure there's no residual powder on it from anything else this is an elf blending eye brush Whatever the width of the head of the bristles, that's how far it will spread the colour. So if you've got less space than me, then just use a slightly smaller brush. Right, because when the shaft of rainbow comes in, it goes to a beautiful teal at the bottom. I'm going to pop some teal on next. I'm going to go into shade Rich. Tap off. And I'm going to go just slightly below where we started before. Start off. I will be tidying this up, don't worry. Just flick the edge up. Like so. And bring it down onto the outer third of the mobile lid. 
and if you've had to move your crease this is the colour that you now need to put to wherever you've moved your crease to. So I'm going to carry this along in exactly the same way that I did the purple. Right the way along. Fleckle when we get there. Reverse the direction. And come back again. And you can see those two colours have blended together really nicely. And it's giving a really beautiful smoky finish to the eye. I'm really liking this. I wonder if Christopher will go this dark. One of the things I love, 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 love about Christopher, I know I said I'd talk more about him at the end, but he's not afraid of using colour which I love to see because all too many influencers or beauty channels seem to stick to much more neutral looks um, or if they do a colour they, they restrict it to the lower lash line or just a little bit on the, the mobile lid here and keep everything else very plain um, I love playing with colour and so does Christopher which is one of the reasons I enjoy watching his channel so much he'd make a comment one day <laughs> that um, he very often watches me in, in the shower because he knows that I'm always very softly spoken so he can chill out, watch a film of mine and know that it won't wake his partner up. I love that. I just love that thought that in the morning waking up he's listening to me whittle on about well, all kinds of everything really with me. Now yes I will be neatening things up and I will show you how I do that in just a moment. I'm just going to clean this brush off. I think what I'm going to do is go for one of my indie brand duo chromes to really give a punch because the, the shimmers in this palette, you've got a yellow gold, a rose gold, a light bronze, a deep bronze, a dark bronze, a teal and a purple. So none of them really are what I'm wanting for the lid. No. Got a pad here just with my cellar water on. And I'm going to run that along under the eye and then just up. Like so. To neaten that edge. I've had people say to me, well if you're going to do go to all that trouble, why don't you just put tape down? Well, because if the tape is sticky enough to stop pigment from coming underneath it, then it's more than likely going to tug too hard at your skin when you take it off and cause you some issues because I have issues with this eye the eye that I'm blinding because when I was sort of four or five years old so we're talking over 40 odd years ago now the ophthalmic hospital pulled my eye around an awful lot when they were trying to find out why I wasn't seeing properly through it and because of that I've got super super deep creasing just here 
So I do have to break my own rule about never pulling your eyelid out because of causing damage to the lid. So, question is, which of my wonderful dual chromes do I want to go in with? I have got a purple, blue, gold. I've got a green to gold. Or I've got a, oh I think it's going to be that one isn't it? The teal to purple. I think it might just have to be that one. I'm just going to clean my fingers off before I get that everywhere. Ah, this is actually a company you can't buy from anymore because they don't exist. So I'm sorry about that. This is Blush Tribe and it was their Neelum pigment, which was loose, but I set it. There you go. You can probably see the shift there from teal to purple and back again. So I'm just going to pick this up on, this is a Voldemorphy. It was obviously out of a set because it hasn't got a number or anything on it, so I don't know what it is. Sorry about that, but it's a very small packing brush. Now, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will ruin the pigment. But now I've applied it, I'm just going to give it a bit of a spray. This is just an old setting spray of mine that I don't use anymore because I prefer different setting sprays. The ferrule here is now wet, so obviously just tuck it into your knuckle and spin because you don't want the moisture coming down loosening the glue that holds those bristles. You can use any liquid that you like to moisten the pigment. You can use moisturising spray like a MAC or a Marie Badescu. You can use a priming spray, a setting spray, finishing spray. You can even just wash out an empty spray bottle and put fresh water in it and uh, use that. But what it does, it helps to minimise fallout from the brush down your face for a start. Although I always do my foundation afterwards, so it's not that much of an issue for me. But it also gives you more of a metallic finish, as if you've applied it with your finger. I don't like using my finger to apply pigments because I, I don't feel like I get the accuracy that I want. So I'm just going to dry that brush off before going back into the pigment to do the other eye. Now, as I said, with the other eye, I do have to do things slightly differently because if I don't, I've found through experience that what happens is the pigment ends up just collecting very loosely in the creases rather than being blended on to the lid. Um, and it ends up cascading down my face as it dries. It hurts if it gets in my eye. It looks a mess. It's just, it's not good. So, I am going to break my own rule about never pulling your eyelid around. This is how I apply it to cause as little additional damage as possible. Gently pull the lid out just far enough to straighten the creases. I'm not pulling it out around my ear roll. And I'm going to blend the pigment on as quickly and neatly as I can. 
making sure there was no loose bits accumulating and then gently put the lid back, I don't just let go and let it fling back and the rest of the lid I'll do the same way that I did this one and you can see there's a lot more movement to this lid, it has a lot less elasticity in it because of how it was pulled around when I was younger. So please, please don't make it a habit of pulling your eye out to do your wind liner or, you know, putting pigments onto your mobile lid because, you know, you, you will end up doing damage. You may not see it for a few years, but trust me, you will end up doing damage. Now what I'm going to do, just using the tips of the bristles, I'm just going to really gently fluff that into that teal at the edges there. That's lovely. Um, if you're wondering what the other two pigments were that I swatched, uh, the other purple one, oh, that's another company that doesn't exist anymore, sorry. Oh My Glitter Merbabe pigment. And the green one is VE Cosmetics Thoth. T H O T H. That's this one. And I do have a discount code with VE Cosmetics. It is Bomber. And I believe it saves you 10%. They do do one called Immortal, which is very similar. In that it's um, almost like a, a purple to copper. It's very difficult to capture the shift when it's not in natural daylight with that one. I don't know if you can actually, there you go, you can just about catch the coppery shift there. And that, again, like I said, was VE Cosmetics and that was Immortal. Again, those are loose pigments that I chose to press just because I'm a bit of a klutz with loose pigments. So if I if they will press, then I usually do press them, um, <clears throat> just so that I have less mess to clear up. To be quite honest with you, and I am always, always honest with you. Right, I'm going to have to pause you now while I go and put some foundation and whatnot on. I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. So I will see you just after this bubbly bit. <laughs> see you right now. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Right, my lovely ones. Hello, I am back. And I'm just going to clean some of the soap off of the spoolie that I've just done my brows with. I used my usual pink honey soap brow. Thingy, strawberry, whatever the heck it is. I, you'd think I'd know by now the times I've used it. And I'm just going to use the other end to pick up a pigment and fill in my browns. I think I'll go into Rich, which is the teal that I used through here. The reason I do soap brows, I was using pomades, coloured pomades, but then I noticed that Revolution seemed to have stopped doing them. Um, and there were some colours I hadn't got, and, and then people were finding it difficult because Revolution had stopped selling them, and at the time KVD was not a company people wanted to buy from. So... 
I tried to find a different way to do coloured brows and I discovered this soap brow trend and the only problem with soap brows is when you first do them they're a little bit sticky so I found that by going over them with coloured eyeshadow pigment because it's sticky it grabs the colour which is great, perfect, just what you want but also with it being a powder it sort of sets it for you so it holds the brow shape And that, my darlings, is what I have done for some time. And it's great because you, you absolutely know then that you're going to have matching brows to your look that you've done. Because you can use the same eyeshadow. And you can see here where this is going on just on my brows and obviously over foundation and face powder you can see the difference in the, the the brightness of this particular shade compared to when it's on top of a black primer if you're interested let me know in the comments and what I'll do I'll do a look for you with white primer on one eye and black primer on the other so you can see exactly how it affects as usual my eye is deciding to choose now as a really good time to start watering This unfortunately is one of my fibro side effects. It's why I've had to stop wearing contacts. I used to wear contacts all the time. I've had to start wearing glasses and just saving contacts for when we used to go out for a karaoke or whatever. Which last karaoke I went to was February 2020, just for all the lockdown started. Yeah, so let me know in the comments if you would like me to do that where I do a look with um, same eyeshadows but different primers. Because if you want to see that, then I'm, you know, I'm quite happy to do one of those for you. Not a problem at all. And let me know whether you want me to do dark colours like this or brighter colours or mid-tones just tell me what you want to see and I'll do my best to accommodate for you I'm going to use one of my Cosmic Brushes brushes look at this oh, just, oh the the Asperger's side of me which I'm still waiting for a confirmed diagnosis as well the autism now on it because they've put Asperger's under autism. Could just sit and watch this for hours, but I won't because filming. I'm going to go into that same shadow, the teal rich. And I'm just going to run that along. You can really see the difference now when it doesn't have that black primer under it. That's exactly what I wanted. I'm just going to run that along under the eye, clean it off. Grab another brush. Okay. 
slightly fluffier but still with a reasonably flat top to it and I'm going to go into Hope which is a slightly brighter teal See, and I'm just going to use that to just soften that lower lash line and add a wee bit of brightness because of the bright shaft of colour that's coming through in the picture. Where I have very watery eyes I can't always put anything on my waterline but I do always do something under my lower lash line like this just to finish the look off. So if you also struggle with putting things in your waterline just do a slightly more dramatic under the lower lash line. Right, now I need to decide highlighter. Mm. Difficult. I'm going to go into champagne in the uh, palette. This is just an old lip brush that I've had for years. I'm just going to pop some of that champagne under the tail of my brow. Just to give it a little bit of a lift. And then again, oh, that'll stop watering for five minutes. In a corner, and I like to bring mine down and just blend it in with the colour that I've run under my eyes. I think it just finishes the eye look off just nicely. Hmm. I don't think I'll use that as a highlight though. It's a little bit too, uh, a little, a little bit too opaque. Right, my lovely ones. I'm going to pause you for one final time. Once again, it will be instant for you, but I will have to wait a while. I'm going to choose a highlighter to apply to my cheekbones and nose and top lip and sticky out chin. Um, mascara, lippy, do something with the hair that I've put way too much dry shampoo spray in. So, if you see any white flakes, it's dry shampoo spray. Sorry. Um, and I'll be back with my finished look, so please don't go anywhere. And I'm back. Okay, so this is my finished look inspired by this picture. It's chosen by this lovely young man. So, I'm always asked to tell you what else I have used on my face. So, very quickly, Milani Screen Queen in 120. It's actually the wrong undertone for me, it's warm nude, but I can usually fudge it and make it work. Uh, Revolution Conceal and Hydrate 0.1 Concealer, Cotier Spun Translucent Extra Coverage Powder, Physician's Butter Bronzer, Nars Orgasm Blush. The highlighter on my face that I went for was Water Brat by Fenty, which is that pinky one because I wanted to try and pick up on some of the pink um, in the picture itself. The lippy is Melt by Starlight. And I thought the colour and the name were appropriate there. Mascara is my usual Catrice Glamondole Volume Waterproof Mascara. I've said it for a long time now. It's a 
bang on dupe for bad girl bang. It's cheaper and it's waterproof. And I think I want to slant. I don't know if that's better or not. Anyway, how do you think I've done? Was you expecting me to go quite this dark this time? Or did you think I was going to go more for the bright side of the picture? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Don't forget to let me know if you want me to do those um, dark base, light base and same eyeshadow colours. I now stop it. Honestly, it's been annoying me all day and it chooses now to play up. Great. Um, if you are one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still deleting people, but they're leaving my films in your feed, so it's not obvious that you've been deleted. While you're there, please double check your notification status. Uh, because mine keeps getting knocked back to personalised, which means I get nothing at all. Once you have done that, please go across to Christopher. He is an absolutely fantastic makeup artist. He, like me, is not afraid of colour. He does some of the most beautiful, colourful and avant-garde and editorial looks that I've seen anybody do. Um, he is extremely skilled with makeup um, and he's a really nice chap as well so head over there check him out do all the good youtuber things like comment share subscribe you know all those good things let him know that you've come from 4F and just basically show him the same love and respect that you always show to me thank you please thank you if However, you are here by some other means, either from Christopher's channel or you've tripped over me some other way. Hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it here. This is pretty much what you get on this channel. I blether on about all kinds of everything, apparently in um, a soothing voice. So if you think you can bear to listen to some more of this and watch me chuck more coloured pigments on my face in varying hues and I was going to say shades but it's the same as hue isn't it shapes, hues and shapes, there we go <coughs> and occasionally get halfway through a sentence and have my fibro bone go you know what you were going to say? yeah I'm going to take that away and leave you with dead air so if that sounds like fun I'd love for you to join us at the 4F family it's super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the home that YouTube will pull their finger out and actually send you some. Allow me to deal with a, an errant trying to smudge my makeup. Good lord. Um. If you have enjoyed this and you want to watch some more or you just want a little bit of relaxing me time I've got a huge number of films you can watch I've also got a huge backside but that's neither here nor there um, I do all kinds of things on here as well as this pick challenge I've got other collabs I do product reviews, makeup tutorials tags, other challenges. I even read you my favourite poem in one of these films. So I'm sure you'll find something that'll interest you. And I've said it for what feels like forever now. But grab a drink, grab a snack, get yourself comfy with your coffee and your custard cream or your, your glass of vino and a Viscount biscuit, whatever grabs your fancy, pick a playlist, get comfy and just indulge for a bit. Alright my lovelies, I'm sure that's quite enough for me from one day. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I 
Well, I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Can't watch Christopher.